Man, I tell you what, it is so refreshing that the media is asking the hard hitting questions and covering some hard, serious angles. I mean, I don't know what I would have done if I didn't know that Jill Biden is wearing a scrunchie. Hello, this is Karen. And this is Kevin. And And this this is is Right From from Us. Actually, Dr. Jill Biden. She's a doctor. She's a great doctor. (laughs) By the way, welcome to number 34 of our podcast from right from us. Um, Yeah, they're saying that because she went to some kind of candy store to pick up some Valentine's candy for her for Joe Biden. Shh, Don't tell him. Yeah. You know, this is the same kind of coverage that Michelle Obama was getting, you know, just everything about, you know, her arms were the most wonderful arms of any woman alive and, and, uh, you know, that kind of, that kind of thing. A scrunchie, really people, really a scrunchie. And, and, you know, they completely just, uh, um, ignored Melania Trump, who's the most beautiful first lady of all time, you know, a fashion model and, you know, speak seven languages and, and, you know, you never saw any stories about Melania Trump. She wasn't on one magazine. Cover. I don't, can you believe that? Yes, I, mean, I can believe it. She's actually a fashion model. I know, and, but that doesn't count. Yeah. It only counts if you're a lefter, a lefty. So what else is going on? So the big news this week, holy cow, we had some weather, didn't we? My goodness. Last week it was ice. This week it was all snow. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah uh, like that one day. Was it Monday? I think the high was Monday. one degree. Yeah, and then and then it got all the way down to negative ten degrees, I think. And I just cringe to think what our utility bill is going to be. Yeah, did you see that one person in Texas? They they uh, apparently they can look up look online at their mm-hmm. utility bills, and he he his bill was showing as seventeen thousand dollars. Yeah, and it's usually six hundred or something right, like that. Right, right. You know, that's always a mistake, but well, yeah, but they're. They're talking about, you know, making sure there's no price gouging or anything like that. You know, the utility company is taking advantage of people and the whole weather situation. But for us personally, I'm a little worried, not going to lie. I mean, our, our heater has been running nonstop since, well, for almost a week now. Yeah, and we've we've uh, we've been turning it down, way down, because they, they were saying that they're going to have blackouts. They're going to have rolling blackouts. Right. So we were trying to be responsible, and we've had it turned down to 63 at night, which is our normal, honestly, because we both like it colder at night to sleep, but then 65 during the day, which, I mean, you know, you layer up. It's really not that big of a deal, but I still feel like our heater is not turned off. It has been running a lot, And I can sure. just picture the, you know, the gauges outside just spinning, 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 and I'm thinking, oh, man, cha-ching, cha-ching. Yeah, these poor people in Texas. You know, oh, te- Texas. There was that the, was terrible. Uh, the grid in Texas. Texas basically has its own grid, and it got Compiled overwhelmed mostly of windmills. Correct? No, 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 no. Has it not been? Is it not mostly windmills? No. The, I was thinking that was a large portion of that. Well, it's a it's a large portion. I think it's maybe twenty or maybe maybe at the most thirty percent. But mm. the there's a lot of factors. That, that caused the is, issue in Texas. One one of the factors was the windmills froze up, and also their um, solar panels got covered with snow and ice. Yeah, but what happened to their their coal and gas? Well, I mean, you, you can't really talk about this because if you mention that the windmills had a problem, you might get attacked. So be quiet about that. I'm don't, beyond don't caring about at this that. point. Bring it on. Yeah, apparently there's there's been a higher and higher percentage of green energy. And, you know, I, I like green energy. I think that's a great idea. It is a great idea. But the thing about it is when the wind doesn't blow. Well, it's not and sustainable. Night, and it's not always realistic with climates such as ours. Well, that, but you have to have... You have to have something else to back up the green right. energy because the wind doesn't always blow mm-hmm. and the sun doesn't always shine. You know, at night, there's not, right. not much well, energy cloudy coming. cloudy days and stuff too. Right. Right. So what happened is the a large percentage of the windmills went offline. Yeah. And also it just so happens that there was issues with the 
the other generating plants, the natural gas, some of the natural gas lines froze up, steam from whatever. Right, which is basically up. the problem we had here in our city is we never really, we never lost our electricity, thank God. But um, one reason they were having to implement rolling blackouts is because they said water, water vapor had gotten into the gas lines and it wasn't allowing as much gas to flow through there as normal. So... And that I don't know if you guys saw the the viral picture of the helicopter pouring solution on the windmill blades. I didn't see that to get them fro- unfrozen or whatever. But that was actually that was actually fact checked. By the way, that was a picture from some place in Sweden, like years ago. So it wasn't even a, a picture of Texas. You know, isn't it just so disgusting that anything you see on the you can't internet believe or it, hear or it's just like you can't believe anything on the internet there, anymore. There is nothing that's true on the internet. You can't believe even you know reliable news sources anymore because they just. They only they only report what they want to report. They don't really they're not interested in the truth. Of course, Facebook's got Facebook's everything's fact checked. So well, you know that Facebook is true. the exception. Facebook by <laughs> far is the most truthful site on, out there. So did you see they're gonna they're gonna start fact checking climate change uh, misinformation? Oh, I'm so glad someone's going to. There's so much misinformation out there. Thank God for Facebook. Yeah. I know it's crazy. Um, so anyway, um, in, in Texas, they um, their grid went down because the there's a lot of factors. the The windmills went down, the solar panels went down, the the natural gas uh, power plants got froze up. Uh, the the coal, even the coal, there was issues, and then even the nuclear plants, some of the the cooling, the, the water cooling lines on the nuclear plants froze up. So it was yes. like a, just it was a, a perfect storm situation. Yeah. And here's the thing: they're calling it unprecedented, which I know you hate when they, when when events get called that. But it's it's not actually. First of all, to give you some context, like in our city, I looked it up. The last time we had negative temperatures was in 2014. So I'm sure that it happened in Texas at some point in the past. That no one's gone, you know, no one's bothered to look in the history to see when it happened last time. It, I mean, that's a word that everybody's using. The news media is using that unprecedented, yeah. unprecedented Here, a lot. And here's that's, here's if it's, why. If it's happened before, it's not unprecedented. It's correct. Happened before. It's called cyclical. I mean, it goes in cycles. But yeah. the the reason why they're calling it this, I think, is because since they have. They, they weren't prepared for the type of cold that they actually experienced. Not just the energy sources, but people's houses. Like a bunch of pipes were bursting and people were coming home to like water coming down from the ceiling and their floors are covered in water and the, their houses are not built, you know, to withstand this type of cold. So, I mean, granted, well, it doesn't happen very often. What was often. the temperature down there? Do you know? It was about like our temperatures in the, here. In the teens or something? Yeah, it was, it was bitterly cold. Hmm. Very unusual for Texas. So, because of that, they just weren't prepared for that type of, of climate because they, they don't normally experience that. But I guess my point is, now that you know it's possible, it may not happen often, but let's, you know, perhaps you need to go ahead and and prepare for that eventuality because it's not unprecedented well because it's going to it's going to happen again i mean yeah. when we don't know but yeah. you know it's going to yeah. so be prepared you know even here we had um just about a month ago they announced that the actually the power plant that's just down the road from us about a mile that they're they announced it that it's closing and which was a coal plant right well apparently when it when it was built in the fifties, it was natural gas. And oh, then, was it? Yeah. And oh, then I it, thought it was a coal plant the whole and time. And then in the seventies, whenever the big energy crisis happened, they converted part of it to coal. I gotcha. And then the and then in uh, the Obama in administration, basically they made made it to where coal plants weren't feasible because of all the regulations. So they basically clo- closed down the coal part of it when Obama. But you said that they regulation. just recently closed it, though. Right, and they and they just recently closed down the last two natural gas generators there. So then, where does our natural where does our gas come from? Well, that that's the electricity. 
the gas is just the natural gas is for pipelines. Oh, pipelines. I see. I got gotcha. you. So we, I mean, we still we still have a at least one power plant that I know of in Springfield. But this one down the street, they just announced that it closed, but they were able to get it back running and ironically, provide some yes, power. because we were sucking so much energy that they they were they couldn't keep up. They did like I think they opened it to half capacity or something like that. Apparently, two generators yeah. they got back going. Yeah. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see if they if they do continue on and close that thing down because... Well, I mean, it, it, if, if nothing else, that should prove to them that we need to keep this stuff for backup. Yeah, it needs to be a backup. I mean, I think they're, they're just getting a, too, a little bit ahead of themselves on this green energy and you can't... You know, when the, when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine... Yeah, so like, what you are you going to do? you got to have something... Yeah. Have a backup plan because you can't just automatically assume that our... Temperatures are always going to remain the same, that the wind's always going to blow, the sun's always going to shine. Like in California, I can kind of see them being able to rely on something like that because their climate is so steady for the most part. But here in the Midwest, I mean, our our climate, our and our weather can change like every two hours sometimes. So it's just not feasible. Yeah, of course, of course Bill Gates says that, you know, they have – windmills and and uh solar panels in iowa so why can't they have them in texas so you know for a smart man he is so stupid so well, some of the things that he says he, are so dumb he just needs to keep keep out of it him you and know? dr fauci yeah anyway we could have been just you know everybody in texas texas could have just taken off and gone to cancun like ted cruz oh my gosh i cannot you know i like senator cruz but I, I have to agree. I, I, I don't think that it, he should be canceled. I don't think he should resign. He made a mistake, but that was a boneheaded so, move. So if you had, so say if you had uh, non-refundable tickets and a whole entire family vacation planned, and there's really nothing that he can do. No. You know, what's he going to do? Go out there and. I agree. There was nothing he could physically do about the situation. However, the rules don't really apply to him because he's a public official. It just looks bad. And his entire state, who voted to represent them, is are suffering. They can't even get drinking water. They have to boil their water, which I don't know how they're going to do with no electricity, but I'm sorry, Texans. But then he goes to Cancun. I'm sorry. I thought that was a boneheaded and insensitive move on his part. And yeah, he says as soon as he got on the plane, he started second guessing himself. I'm like, really, Senator? Really? You shouldn't have gotten on the plane to begin with. Yeah, well, Not right now. I'm yeah. sorry, but you're a public official and your your plans are just going to have to change. Yeah, well, he, he's apologized. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't agree with all the the lefties that are out there calling for his resignation and just going berserk as they usually do because they're in a perpetual state of being freaked out by everything and offended. But I mean, at least it wasn't like, you know, a lot of these public officials that where they're, wherever they, wherever they're from was under lockdown and they went someplace. At least it wasn't something like that. It it wasn't a lockdown or, or something. No, I don't care how you spin it. I don't care how yeah. people justify it. I think that was a bonehead move. It was insensitive, and shame on you, Senator Cruz. You should not have gone. Not when your entire state had it been declared an emergency. The state had declared an emergency. So, but, I mean, he he really doesn't even live there. I mean, it just, he lives in Washington. It D. doesn't so. matter. He's yeah. been elected by the by the people to represent them, and he is basically thumbing his nose up at them and going to Cancun. I know that wasn't his intention. I know he was just trying to, you know, take care of his family and get them someplace warm. But then again, there's millions of other families who would love the opportunity to just jump on a plane and go to Cancun when it's cold weather like this. So, no, I don't think that was that was a smart move on his part. So, anyway, you know, the uh, the Biden administration sent a bunch of diesel generators and blankets down to Texas. Yeah, I know. You notice they didn't send like little windmills and though solar AOC <laughs> now AOC is thinking that they need more windmills. That's what she said. We need to send more windmills they, down they, there. They are trying to blame it on fossil fuels. She said, so you know, "Dumb." That's unbelievable. But yeah. anyway, speaking of flights, did you just just earlier, uh, just a few hours ago, I think this uh, 
plane taking off from Denver, headed toward Hawaii. The engine blew up. Did you see that? Uh, yeah. Could you imagine being at home and having a big, huge engine part come through the roof of your house? Yeah, and there's there's some videos on online of people. That would be scary. A family at a park, and there's just like there's just like metal, just like raining down, things raining down around them. Yeah. That's like an apocalyptic kind of world, you know. Yeah. It's like the world's falling apart. Yeah. Do you remember that time we were on a flight and there was an issue? Yes. The landing gear wouldn't come down and uh-huh. we had to keep circling around. That was kind of scary. They actually had to go into the, the middle. It was a smaller plane. No. Yeah, it was. It was a smaller plane because remember they had to go into the aisle, open up a hatch door and huh. and manually crank I, I remember the landing a, gear down. I remember a regular size jet. No, 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 no. It was one of those little Eagle planes that we could hmm. take from the big city to our city. Hmm. Don't you remember they had to get in the middle of the aisle and actually open up a hatch yeah, but and I crank? Think it, was, it was a big plane, wasn't it? No, it was. Okay, not. I've got that. We'll have to. We'll get back to you on that one. I, no, I've it got wasn't. The, trust me. I've got the article. No, 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 I've no, got no, the no, actual no, article because no. you got you got interviewed by the newspaper when we landed. I did. <laughs> you don't even. You don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she but, doesn't even remember that. So I've got the article. I think it was a regular sized plane. I don't think it was. Do you? Can you crank the landing gear down from yeah. the aisle? Yeah, because and, they, on a big apparently plane? there's like a little window where they were they were looking. Hmm. They were looking under the seat through this window to see if the landing gear was mm. was up or down. Hmm. And then they apparently well, crank it. regardless, but yeah. It anyway. was a scary moment because, you know, we thought we were going to have to land without landing gear. That's kind of scary. But and There's also some videos where the the, pe- the passengers were actually filming the, the engine on fire. Oh, my gosh. Could you imagine that? I can't imagine being those poor people on that plane. That had to have been so scary. Speaking of, have you been, I, I meant to ask you this earlier, have you been watching the Mars coverage? Not really. It's kind of it, cool, actually. It, it seems too fake to me. It does seem a little fake. Is it real? I don't Do think, think so. Do you think it's real? <laughs> so, somebody. Again, I don't believe that we actually went to the moon either. I'm one of those people. You guys, come on. Back in the 60s, we didn't have the technology we have today. Why haven't we gone? Oh, don't even get me started. Anyway, it just, it's... It would be cool if it's real. I hope it's real. But what I've been looking at, and, and they, you know, been um, um, transmitting the sounds back. This sounds pretty cool. But anyway, it's just. I, I've just it's seen, cool. I've seen the headlines. I really haven't paid attention to it. I've it watched just, a couple of videos. It it's pretty neat. Too, it seems too fake to me. But no, okay, I know it's, okay. I know it's well, not let fake. Let me ask you this. Riddle me not. this. You think that the landing on Mars is fake, but you think the landing on the moon is, is I, real I, I from really the 60s? It, I don't really think it's fake, but it just seems fake. I, I really think, and I'm disappointed, it seems like they should be focusing on going back to the moon. I guess why? There's nothing on the moon. They already, I guess, well, depending on if it really so happened or not, like that base, we've already been like there. a moon base or something there. It's like, but for what? Just to have it. It's like, what, is, what about the people that, like Christopher Columbus, that came to America? Why? Why? You know, because people can actually inhabit the earth. Well, people can inhabit the moon oh. too. We just learn, need to learn how to do it. I wonder if we'd ever, ever, if we'll ever get to that point where we actually have like a colony of people that live on the moon. Well, not not at this rate. I mean, if they're they're, I think they should focus on the moon. Well, this is assuming that Biden doesn't sign some bill to take NASA away again, because the, the only reason we're on Mars now is because of Trump, right? Because he reinstated I, I the really whole space program. I haven't that that well. I know that under Obama, the NASA got stripped and they did away with the space shuttle and everything else. But I don't know, maybe. Anyway. So we went shopping yesterday, grocery shopping, and I did something really brave. I'm kind of proud of myself. I took my mask off. I you're, know, right? You're going to jail. <laughs> Well, it's funny because we get in there, you know, and I've got it under my nose because I'm wearing glasses and it fogs up and it's super annoying. And I look over and he's not even wearing his. And I thought, you know what? It's time to put my money where my mouth is. So I just take it off. But you know what was really great? There were actually a lot of people at Walmart without a mask on. I feel like there are more and more people that are like, oh, I'm done. This is this is stupid. I'm not doing this anymore. I, I don't know. I am. I think the other the other way. No, I, think that I don't think so. I, I just can't believe so many people are still going along with this foolishness. I think people are too scared. They just don't want to break I the think, rules. I think the majority of people do not agree with it, but I think the majority of people are also scared of repercussions. And they're afraid of getting confronted. 
Yes, of having you know, some could, Karen go up to them and yeah. start confronting them and taping it or you know filming yeah. it and putting it if on I, the internet. If I got con- confronted by a store employee, I would probably put it. Put yeah, because it's on. not their fault. But if it was some, some oh, other I'm person, already I would prepared. just say, "Oh, thank you." No, Th- I'm just going to say, me. "Mind your own business." You have yeah. a mask on. What are you worried about? Yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously, whatever. Uh, speaking of the whole mask fiasco, Dr. Fauci says it's very likely safe for vaccinated family members to hug. Oh, I am so relieved that Dr. Fauci has given us permission to hug another vaccinated person. Thank you, Dr. Fauci. You're so wise. I'm so glad you're here. Not to mention, I don't think I I put a link to this on here, but uh, Dr. Fauci recently won some kind of award. A million dollars from, what country was it? It was Israel. Yeah, it was Israel. Which is kind of surprising. That is weird. Something about truth. For his contribution to science or something like that. No, I think it was something to do with truth, too. Like, professing truth or something like that. This man. (laughs) I swear. I mean, he's already the highest paid government, federal government employee. He's a fool. I'm sorry. I I know. Whatever... He changes every every week. He it changes just just like your typical extreme lefty. They say what they what they think the people want to hear, or what they think the people can handle, because you know clearly they know best. Depending on what TV show he's on that yes, week. Yes, exactly. I don't know why anybody puts any stock in what comes out of that man's mouth. He has been so inconsistent and so wrong. Well, I stopped this about entire a year time. ago. I stopped listening to Dr. Fauci about a year ago. Oh, I stopped listening to him a couple of weeks into this whole COVID mess. Okay, so did you, speaking of COVID, did you see the uh, information, uh, the comparison of California's COVID numbers to Florida's COVID numbers? Which, for context, California has had some of the strictest lockdown orders, not laws, but orders in the country. And Florida has had the most relaxed of the entire country. We and they've went, got a lot of criticism for that, too. We went to Florida. We did. And we had a lot and, of fun. you know, actually, a lot of people have gone to Florida. Yeah. And, okay, so on top of that, you know, not, not only not being locked down, but all the, all the travelers going to Florida. Mm-hmm. And the numbers, it's, it's just like almost identical. It's actually, Flor- Florida's... It's actually Flor- better, better. Slightly better. Yeah. So without the lockdowns. Right. Everything's been opened up. All the travelers going to Florida and the numbers have been better. <laughs> and you know something else equally amazing about those numbers? We've had virtually no flu this season. That's got to be yeah, unprecedented. I'll, I'll put that I'll put that graph back on there. That's number um That's number 13 13B. I mean, you have to admit Kevin, that is an unprecedented event right there. There, the We've flu, had virtually no flu this season. I bet you go back to very to past flu seasons. I bet you can't find numbers this low. I'll bet you. Uh, it's. Uh, I think it's. I think they said 130 years ago it was this low. 130 years ago, when the monitoring and record keeping probably wasn't nearly what it is today. Yeah. 130 years ago. So that would be like the 1890s or something. I mean, think about that for a minute. Think about that for a minute. 1888. The record keeping back then had to have been minimal at best. It couldn't have been that accurate. Did they even keep records back in 1888? That's exactly my point. I don't know. So anyway, I'll I'll put this on the screen. This, this This is the graph of the flu... Of the, the the percentage of flu cases, and the the at the bottom the the triangles, the line with the triangles at the bottom, is this year, and then the the other lines, the other colored lines, colored lines are previous years, uh, number of flu cases, and you can see that for 2020 it's just it's just non-existent. Yeah. So if that doesn't make you go hmm, yeah, then so, I don't know hmm. what will. Yeah, it's pretty suspicious. If nothing yeah, and, else. I mean, you can see like uh, 2018 is that first line that comes comes up there. I think no, no, that's actually 2009. 
where it has like had like an early peak. 2018 was a was a really bad year, and then uh, also the 2000 yeah 2017 2018 was a really bad year, and it peaked. It it started peaking just about this time, hmm. and actually in 2018 there was like 65,000 flu deaths just in January. What year was that again? 2016? Oh, 18? Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. I, remember, I remember that actually being the pretty... Do you remember pretty... all the lockdowns? Yeah, exactly. You know, all the, the curfews and exactly. stuff like that, that we had back yeah, then? Yeah, I know. No. It's crazy. No, they didn't do anything back then. The whole response to this thing has just been just utterly crazy and overkill. But I don't know. Hopefully we can get back to normal soon. I, I don't think it's going to. I think they're just, they're, I mean, they're talking about these new variants and stuff like that. They're just going to do anything they can. Yeah, but they're these just talking about these like, new variants just to try to keep people, you know, scared. I don't know that the new variants have any big significance on the disease itself. Well, I still see people driving in their car by themselves with the mask on. Yeah, I, I people, just don't, I don't understand why you're doing that. And you know what? Street. Mark my words, there's going to be some kind of study come out that, um, you you know, people that wear masks for long periods of time, you, that can't be healthy. That just can't be because your breath is going to get moist, caught in that, in that mask, and now you're breathing that back in again. That cannot be good for you. I'm telling you, there's going to be some long-term study that comes out that that caused people some health issues. Yeah, I, I don't I don't get enough oxygen when I breathe when I wear a mask, so I can't breathe. So I'm not wearing really one crazy. unless I have to. You don't breathe unless you have to. Yeah, I, I don't wear a mask <laughs> unless I have to. That explains a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, voters now believe Joe Biden is a puppet of the far left. What, what's the source of that? Well, this is an article on WND.com. And um, it says, uh, for much of the 2020 presidential election campaign, many critics of Joe Biden charged he was catering to the extremists in the Democratic Party. They warned that in his effort to attract votes, he would advocate policies that were not in alignment with mainstream America. Uh, well, yeah, duh. The Sun reported Biden is, was being described in the political world as a puppet of Nancy Pelosi and far-left Democrats, that they're actually the ones pulling the strings. Finally, they're waking up. Well, even um, another country called uh, thinks that Joe Biden has dementia. Well, that's Aus- Australia. That's what it was, is Australia. Yeah, and that's, that's actually the, the people at Sky News Australia, which is a pretty good channel. Actually, you know, I, I, look at, I like to look at news coming out of other countries it seems like it's it's more accurate or at least it seems more level-headed australia and like the bbc and stuff like that it seems it seems more to me to be more accurate than the united states news media oh yeah for sure donald trump jr said he's a puppet of the radical left and he's their dream guy because they'll sign whatever they put they put in front of him and he doesn't know the difference now a new Rasmussen poll finds 54% of likely voters think Biden is a puppet of the left. Only 40% degree, or agree. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I think that, and there was some story, I don't know. It's almost like a Babylon Bee story, but it's true. Biden um, was uh, playing Mario Kart with his grandkids while Kamala Harris was having some kind of big video conference call with some leaders of countries, which was very unusual <laughs> that he would be doing that. So I don't know. I mean, who's really running this country, I guess, is really the the crux of that conversation, which is scary because, I mean, I already don't have any confidence in the figureheads as it is. But anyway. All right. We're getting up there on time. Nope. We still have a lot more to talk about. Okay. <laughs> Did you hear about this? Nearly one third of Americans want to break up U.S. into like-minded countries. One third of Americans. Have you have have you seen the uh, the map that's always on Gab? Uh, It's got like the basically Canada and California and New York, basically all as one country, and then everything else. Oh, really? No, I didn't see that. Yeah. Here's something else interesting too on this article. 
You have a little share to gab button now. Yes. That's that. cool. Yeah, I saw that. That's cool. Um, anyway, this was uh, nearly one third of Americans want to break up U.S. into like minded countries from the blaze published on the WND site it says the divide between Americans seems to be widening in recent years and the political sh- chism, 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 schism. Get schism? schism? I don't know. Doesn't appear to be narrowing anytime soon. The major partisan divide in the country has gotten to the point that many Americans have contemplated a national divorce because they believe there are far too many ideological differences to bridge the line of demarcation. So what do you think about that idea? Dividing the country into like conservatives, far lefts. uh, That would never work. I think that's pretty sad. It is, it is sad, actually. We can't just get along. Why can't we just get along? <laughs> get along to get along, yeah. yeah Go yeah. along to get along. Yeah, I, you know, I think that about maybe about 20 years ago, conservatives started waking up and started standing up for their <laughs> beliefs and ideals. And 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 the, the left, basically, is just accusing the, the right of being divisive for that and we're just standing up for what we believe in our right. our, our thoughts and ideas right. for a right. change you yeah know? and you need that opposition for checks and balances yeah because i mean just because it's your idea doesn't mean it's the right idea and um something else too you know that i quote the babylon Bee a lot because it makes me laugh they have a lot of funny articles headlines that kind of thing you know, for instance, um, to fight white supremacy, Coca-Cola discontinues vanilla Coke. <laughs> Media immediately stops covering Ted Cruz's story after he puts on Andrew, Andrew Cuomo mask. <laughs> Those kind of things. Anyway, they're satire. It's a, it's a site. It's a satire. It's like the onion. It's they're pretty just, funny. It's they're, a pretty funny website. They're just satire articles. But now Wikipedia editors want to label Babylon B right wing disinformation. And that's a real thing. Who says that? What? That's the very bottom, number 14. I just added that right before we started recording. Wikipedia editors. Isn't Wikipedia edited by just whoever edited? Just by normal people. Right. Well, okay. So just some, some wacko got on there and said they want to. Satire is not meant to be taken seriously yet. Big tech and its tools find a way to label any humor coming from the right as disinformation or fake news. The Babylon Bee has been repeatedly victimized by this tug of war. You know, the, the left, the left really has just destroyed comedy in this country. You can't, you can't even tell a joke anymore. No. Without be, being labeled a racist or something. You really can't. You really can't. I mean, comedians, the, the late night show comedians now, they, it's, it's not even comedy anymore. It's just like, it's just like. They're just making fun of people. They're just not even, it's not even, it's just not know. even funny. It's yeah, just mean. It's not funny. You know, it's just it's mean. It's definitely not funny. Okay, so let's ask, let's ask some questions. All right. Let's let's end this let's end this on a light note here. Um, he is not he has not been told these questions by the way. <laughs> he loves it when I surprise him. <laughs> no. I love doing it too because it's so funny to see him squirm. Okay, all right. Did you win any awards as a kid, and what were they? <laughs> Any awards as a kid? Uh-huh. You know, I was in band, and I got w- w- our band almost always had ones, and we got medals and things like mm-hmm. that for, for for I was in like quartets and things like that. I played the trumpet in band, and we I had some court quartets, and I because he's like full these of hot air, that's why I did that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and that's the only thing I think like of. a jazz band thing. No, just band, band, oh. band, concert band. How long were you in band? Well, from like the fourth or fifth grade. I think it was fifth grade. Oh, so it wasn't high school. Well, fifth grade through, oh. and then I I didn't do my senior year, so fifth, fifth to eleventh grade. Oh, wow. I didn't realize you'd played that long. Yeah. I did not do marching band. 
Yeah, our youngest son did that. I still don't know to this day how how they even get those kids I, I, to learn yeah, all that stuff so yeah, fast. Yeah, looking back, I wish I would have done it. Yeah. And like, because it, it was when I moved to. Mm -hmm. I, I can't say that. <laughs> when, I, when I moved to the town you that we to, live in, you need to beep that part. I have to beep, beep that out. <laughs> I dare you to do that. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, your whole world was kind of yeah, and redefined. Uh, actually, a lot of the, my classmates say, hey, why, why aren't you in marching band? Why aren't yeah. you? And I just, at that point, I just didn't want to do it. But Yeah. But our youngest son was, and it yeah, was so cool. I was a good. huge fan yeah. of marching band. It's so yeah, cool. Yeah, it was great. Great for him. Great discipline. Oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. And amazing what they can get high school kids to do in the matter of in just a, a few short weeks. amount of time. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty amazing. So I wasn't really involved in any extracurricular activities in school other than drama. So I don't remember what year it was sophomore junior year. Um, I was actually the student director of our musical. And um, in our short like one act plays, I guess it was or whatever. And we went to competition and we won. A really? bunch of stuff. Yeah, we were really good really? at it. Yeah, so it was really fun. It was made me feel really, and I loved being student director because I wasn't interested in getting out in front of people and doing anything. But you know me, I liked, you know, like controlling things in the back. And that, that seems like a, a part of you that I can't really see. The drama. It was part of fun. It. it was really fun, but more the technical part of it, not the actual acting part of it. I liked like the costumes and the settings and the lighting and, you know, making sure everybody's, you know, hitting their cues and all that stuff, you know, in the background with the headset on and stuff other than being an actor. Hmm. But yeah. it was fun. <clears throat> that was probably one of the biggest things that kept me out of trouble in oh, high school. Uh, also, I was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I wasn't a model citizen, of course, or yeah. student, but. Yeah. Uh, also, I was inducted into the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame for my That's high right. school football you were. team. Yeah, you were. I was the, I was one of the statisticians, <laughs> and we, we actually won state in 1977. <laughs> and that's pretty cool. Actually, uh, it was about two years ago we got inducted into the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame, and I that's actually cool. got inducted. Yeah, that's so pretty I did cool. Win a, Win some you did. Kind of award, you yeah. did. Not as a kid, even, but as an adult. Yeah. Have you won anything as an adult? Actually, you've been in the you've been in our business magazine from your past employer. Yeah. Remember that? I thought yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. But I don't think I've ever. I don't. I haven't won anything as an adult. I'm pretty boring, and there's not much to me. <laughs> what you see is what you get. Um, okay. Here's an interesting question. Should personal ethics ever be compromised for the greater good? Ah, that's a deep question. Kind of like those those questionnaires they were handing out to the kids at our middle school, our local middle school, about, you know, would you kill 10 people to save a 1,000? Which, first of all, it's kind of shocking that they would ask kids that question to begin with in middle school. My hairdresser told I don't me know, that. that. That's I, I don't have a problem with that. It just makes makes really? the kids makes hmm. the kids think about things like that, you know. But to what end, though? Like, what's the objective to even ask them that question this early in their life? I mean, do they even know? Or do they even have the maturity to think? Yeah. About that question and its yeah. meaning and stuff. Well, I mean, it, you, that's something you have to think about. Say, like, if you were a train engineer and you and yeah. you were your train was barreling toward a a town of a hundred thousand. Or something like that, and you had the opportunity to ditch the train to and, 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 and kill, kill the people like, on board. Yeah, kill like a hundred people to save a hundred thousand people, or something like that. That's yeah, something you have that's to think true. About. That's true. That's a that's a sobering and, question. And though, the only thing it? about that would be that that would be um, a decision you have to make fast. Just like say, if it was a plane, you have to ditch your plane. You know. Well, like that plane today, it was yeah. losing have, parts of its you have motor. To ditch a plane that has two hundred people on it to save the city, you know, or something, you know. So, I don't know. I don't. I don't but have see, with that's a little contradictory to what you say sometimes with like people that say, well, "If we could just save one life, you know, wouldn't it be worth it?" That just that saying just gets overused. So, so it really just depends on the circumstance and the situation. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. it's in like imminent danger, really. Yeah. I guess. Um, and then the last one, in what part of your life do you feel the most confident and in what part do you feel the most insecure? The most confident? Mm -hmm. Okay. You go first. The most confident. Um, I feel pretty confident in my 
like debating skills. I don't know if you really call it debating, like, you know, discussing a subject. And I feel like I'm pretty good at bringing up like alternative solutions or points of view or something like that. And I feel pretty confident in my job. I feel pretty confident in what I've done at at work in the healthcare field, which I feel very proud of that, by the way, because when I started healthcare, I had zero experience. That, that's pretty like amazing. Zero. I didn't ha- hadn't gone to school <clears throat> or anything like that. That's I pretty st- amazing that you have taken taken that on. And- I started as a scheduler. I scheduled just like MRIs and CAT scans for patients, and then they eliminated my job and said, "Hey, if you want to keep your job, you're going to either be an MA or you're going to have to find something else." And I'm like, "Well, I guess I'll become an MA, a medical assistant." And I learned on the job. And let me tell you. <laughs> There were times I'd go home crying. I was so yeah. frustrated yeah. and overwhelmed because it's like a new language. I, d- I didn't know anything about it. So anyway, so I feel very confident in my abilities in that job now. And maybe as a as a writer, I feel pretty good about that. But I don't know. What about you? I think I feel the most confident in like financial things. Oh, yeah. You're really Finances good with that. Finances and financial things. Yeah. And investments. You do pretty good with that, too. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're feel- very good at that. And I probably feel the least confident in uh, podcasting (laughs) (laughs) and YouTube videos. Hey, you know what? You know what? That's You guys should be really proud of him because I had to kind of talk him into this whole thing. He was not a big fan of this whole podcasting thing. And we actually started this podcast because we wanted to leave a little bit of ourselves behind for our kids. And, you know, just to give them a sense of what we thought, you know, what was going on in the world at the time and just, you know, kind of a video diary, if you will. And I kind of had to really talk him into this. And then <laughs> now he's like, he's unstoppable. He, he loves it. And the whole video part of this it has really, really interested him. And he's really, well, we have learned a, a lot. We, have a long, we still have a long way to go. We have, Well, by we, I mean you, because you're the one that always edits all these videos and does some cool things with it. But anyway, so I'm really proud of you for doing this. I know it's been uncomfortable for you, and I think you, yeah, you've come a long way. Yeah, I don't, I don't like to talk. I pretty much like to just stay in the background (laughs) and just, you know, listen to other people talk. Well, that's why I'm really proud of you for doing this, because I know it's not easy for you. Whereas me, you know, I just don't shut up, so it's fine. I mean, as as far as what I feel the most insecure about, um, probably numbers and like any kind of analytical data. And, you know, I just don't, I'm terrible at math. I'm terrible at math and any kind of number crunching. I just, I don't know. I have a mental block on that. So I'm very insecure on that. And I don't, I don't know. That's, I guess that's about it. I'm not, I'm not insecure about very many things <laughs> except for that. <laughs> anyway, those are fun questions. I like them. I don't care what you say <laughs> as he rolls his eyes. Um, all right. So other than a crazy weather week, anything else happened in your week this week? Um, no, uh, well, I'm just kind of busy right now with taxes. And oh things. yeah. And Speaking of, didn't they, um, our property taxes are now due, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Didn't they defer them and now they're mm-hmm. due? Oh. The personal property tax. Yeah. And I just paid that. So Yeah, man, that always makes me cringe having to pay There's that. There's kind of a scandal with the uh, with the collector, the, the county collector. You know, she resigned right in the middle of the... What, why did she resign again? Uh, there was some the, kind of well scandal, wasn't there? The, there was a bunch of glitches. And she's saying it's something to do with the assessor's office and a... I don't know. I think they're pointing the finger at her. So oh. she resigned right in the yeah. middle of the collection, the big collection yeah, season. That's, so it's kind of one of those crazy things. That's, that's but, a crazy thing. And I always liked, I'm kind of sad to see her go because I always liked her because she always had this saying that, she, that her office was not very, very, very governmenty. Oh, really? Yeah. And they were always, when you'd go down there or talk to them, they were always really, really friendly and oh, really? great to mm. work with. Yeah. So I'm kind of sad to see her go, actually. Yeah. And then as far as me, I had to, I mean, business as usual at work. I have to say, though, this bad weather was ideal for telemedicine because we're still doing telemedicine at work. Uh, so that was, you know, business as usual. It didn't really 
disrupt my life much, though you did have to take me to work a couple of days this week because our snow got to yeah. be so deep in our yeah. roads. Yeah, once I got my truck started. Yeah. On the, on the day that it was 11 degrees below zero, my truck did not start. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, you know, that's okay. That's fine. We We made it happen, but yeah, I don't know. So other than that, it was just... Basically, surviving a really rough weather week yeah, is, it, was the biggest challenge, I it, guess, this week. It's warming up, and spring is almost here. Yay! Yes, it got up to 40 degrees today, so we got a lot of melting. So I yeah. hope that I hope if you're living in Texas, I hope things are getting back to normal for you guys, because, wow, we believe me, the whole country's been thinking about you this week. So, um, Okay, well, uh, don't forget to, if you're listening to this podcast, we're, on, we're basically on all, all platforms that you wouldn't get podcasts from, and we also... Um, film the podcast as well and we have a YouTube channel and a rumble it's film I thought we were videotaping stop I know I say that a lot well that shows my age so um, but probably because I'm sitting here looking at a video a- camera actually you know other <laughs> other people say videotape do yes, they so, so I think so you made me believe that I was antiquated yeah. and, and yeah. weird for saying that yeah. okay thanks it's, it's I appreciate that you. okay great well that makes me feel better um, but the name of our YouTube channel is right from us R-I-G-H-T from us. And then what is the name of our Rumble account, by the it's way? The same. same thing. Yeah. Right right from us on Rumble. Yeah. Highly recommend that you check out Rumble. It's got it's an up and coming baby con- company and it's it's you know given YouTube maybe a run for its money. Who knows? Anyway, anything else? I think that's it. All right. Thanks well, for listening yeah. and watching. Thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.